Before we start diving deep into React testing library, we first need to understand what is testing and why do we care about it? So that is what we are going to uncover in this lecture, starting with what is testing? Well, simply put, testing is a method to check whether the actual product matches the expected requirements. So we might have a product and we want this product to do something. That is our expected requirements. So in order to see that it actually meets that expectation, we need to test it. Let's actually look at an example to illustrate what I'm saying here. Let's say we have a product and this product is a video game. And inside of this video game, we have a character and this character has a health bar. Now, whenever this character gets hit, what we expect this video game to do is decrease the health bar. So we have a product, which is a video game. And once the character gets hit, we expect that the health bar decreases. Now we need to make sure that this actually occurs. And of course, we're going to make sure that this occurs with testing. And we'll talk about the different ways we can test the different types of testing in future lectures. But for now, that is pretty much what testing is. Now, testing isn't isolated to software applications. So for example, a software application like Google, of course, they test their app. They continuously test it. You know, anytime you want to search something, they want to test that you get the expected results. But there are other companies that are not software related, like Casper that sells mattresses. They rigorously test their mattresses. They, they test the texture, they test the firmness, they test that you know it's, it meets the user's expectation. It meets what they expect of their product. And this is just a mattress. And there are other car companies like Porsche that also rigorously test their cars to make sure that they work the way that they intend them to work. So for example, if you ever seen those safety tests where a car rams into a wall with a dummy inside it, those are tests to test that, hey, the car is meeting some sort of safety expectations, some sort of safety requirements. So they smash $100,000 cars in order to test this out. So again, it's not just isolated to software companies. Now, now that we know exactly what a testing is, let's actually talk about why we want to test. And after going through this, I do expect you to have an idea of exactly why we want to test. But the main reason we want to test our product is we want to increase our confidence in our product. We want to make sure that our product delivers what we expect it to deliver. And what that means that we have high reliability. So no matter how many times we reproduce the same thing, it results in the same action, it results in the same uh, requirement. We want to increase the reliability and we want to decrease the defects. So any defects that occurs. And in software development, this could be a bug. So that is exactly why we want to test. And I hope that makes it clear in this lecture. We learned about what testing is, and we also learned why testing is important, but we didn't really learn how we can test our products, how we can test our applications. So that's what we're going to be doing in this section. In this section, we're going to uncover the different types of testing methodologies. Now, when it comes to testing, there's only two main methodologies that you can utilize, and that is either manual testing or automated testing. So let's actually look at what manual testing is first, and then we'll look at what automated testing is. So in order to understand this, let's actually look at a real life example. So let's say that we have this form right over here and you're asked to validate that the email that they input is actually a correct email. So right here, of course, they can type in whatever email they want. And then when they click submit, if this is not a valid email, we want to show an error, some sort of error message saying that this is not a valid email. Please try again. So what you would do, what any developer would do is they would go to the code and then inside of the code, they would do some things, you know, they would try to add that uh, logic. I already did this. So they'll try to add this logic. And then what they would want to do is test it out. So at the very end, you want to test out if their feature, their new feature that they want to add actually works. Now, how would they do that? Well, they would open up this application in their local machine and they would type in an invalid email inside of this email right over here. 
So you, they would say something like lathe, and then maybe they would forget the at sign, and they would just say lathehotmail.com. And then the, what they would do is click this button right over here, and look at that, we see the error message. The email, the email you input is invalid. So what did we just do here? Well, we just tested our application to make sure that it works the way that we expected. But we did it manually. We manually opened up an instance of our application. We manually typed in an invalid email. We manually clicked this button. And lastly, we manually validated that we got our error. And this is manual testing. And developers do manual testing all the time. It's almost done simultaneously with actual development. So that right there is manual testing, when you actually physically do the thing. So now let's talk about automated testing. Well, automated testing is where you write a test in code describing the behavior that you want and the outcome that you expect. So the behavior that I want is I want to go ahead and type in an invalid email. And then the outcome that I expect is that I get this error. So what I can, what I can do is I can write a test for this, an automated test in code. And an example of this example of what exactly we just did with manual testing is this test right over here. So I have this test that should uh, show email error if email is invalid. And right here, you can see that we're typing in an invalid email. As you can see, this is an invalid email, there's no at sign. And what we're doing is we're expecting this error message to be in the document. So this right here is an automated test that did exactly what we did when manually testing it. So that is a difference between automated tests as well as manual tests. Now, why would we ever want to do manual tests? Writing all this seems a lot more work than just simply doing this and then clicking the button and then validating that it's there. Well, the reason why you want to do automated tests is as your application gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it becomes very, very impractical to manually test every single feature. Whereas with automated tests, you can see here, we have a test for every single feature. And all we simply have to do is run our test suite and check if everything passes. If everything passes, we have increased confidence in our application. We know our application is reliable and there's going to be definitely less and less bugs. So just to point out a, a, an example of where manual tests can really fail us, let's actually look at a scenario where, you know, I do some changes, maybe I want to change this from email address to email, I don't know, just email itself without email addresses. So I go over here, and uh, I go and I say, uh, where's the email? So I change this to email right over here. So I change that to email, everything seems all fine and dandy. And then once I scroll up, I see over here, oh my goodness, he has a bunch of if else statements, I actually prefer to have if statements instead of if else statements. I don't know why would someone would do this. But they they did it, they went ahead and did it and saved their app. Well, now, if they were to refresh, they can check over here, okay, everything is working fine. Let me just quickly input an invalid email, you know, everything seems okay, or let's actually put in a valid email, maybe a password here, but an invalid confirm password. And I can see here, okay, the tests work exactly the way that we intend. Okay, that is completely fine. I'm going to go ahead and ship this inside of production. Well, actually, what you did right here is actually going to cause some problems. So if we opened up our terminal, you can see that our tests actually caught a potential issue that we actually didn't catch when manually testing our application. So what we can actually do is now look at the tests themselves. And we can go here, we can scroll up and look at some of the failing tests. So it seems that this test right here is failing should show email error if email is invalid. Hmm, why is that the case? So now what I can actually do is input an invalid email, submit this, and I can see I get a different error. You know, the password you entered should not contain five characters or more. So you can see that if I did manual testing, I wouldn't have caught this error. But with automated testing, I did. And then I can, of course, debug exactly why I did that. And then I can realize, oh, okay, so it's the else if are the things that guard for this.
So automated testing allow us to catch things that we would most definitely miss with manual testing if our application gets big enough. Now you can see here that we also have another automated uh, failed test. I'm not really sure what that is. Let's go over here and say address, address. So let's save that. Let's save that. Let's just get rid of this test over here and let's run it again. Let's see why that is. And then we wanna see all of the tests. All right, everything is all fine. Now our application is fine and uh, we are confident in it. So I hope that makes it clear exactly why we also want to automate our test. Now React Testing Library is a library that allows us to write these tests for our React application and therefore increasing the confidence of our React app.